Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of PHT TV. We are going to do something today that we promised a long time ago, but we've been uh, putting it off. We wanted to show you some Jubilee action first. So we're going to test the RP8000F Gen 1 versus Gen 2. Exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it should be quite, quite an interesting uh, uh, and somewhat revealing. I'm expecting to see some certain things that we saw looking at them in the singles in the past yes and uh and the other sizes so i'm expecting to see kind of the same thing follow through yeah a lot of people say it's just it prettied up from the last generation but there is quite a bit of internal change in this new generation so yeah, just go slap on the side of the cabinet <laughs> <laughs> you can tell the difference there so if you guys didn't see it i did do the unboxing the rp 8000 f gen 2. Uh, i go over a lot of the specs and what's changed and everything there if you haven't seen that go back but for now let's just dive into it Yep. All right, so we're going to start off with, you want to start off with a new track? Sure, why not? All right, so th we've only tested this track once. It's by Charlie Farley and Jason Helms. It is called Holy Water. The track has quite a bit of bottom end in it. Yeah, and that's what, that's really, I really want to test with these guys. So yeah. we're going to... We're setting fairly close to the wall. What we found out about this room is uh, it, it is very dependent on how tight you get to that wall as the low end come out of the speaker. And, on a rear ported speaker. Yes. Now every room is going to be different. We've kind of, we've been doing this long enough to where we found the best positioning and the best system for this room. But when you get these in your home, make sure you make some adjustments on your own as well. Absolutely. All right. So this is Charlie Farley and Jason Helms. The song is called Holy Water. Creek, the tension's high, cause the chopper's flying fairly low. And underneath the canopy, where the whiskey burns and the marijuana grows, I can hear the sounds of the bloodhounds echoing down that slave rock road. But the sheriff won't find no redemption down here in this holy water. Summer night, I left with the whip of wheels. I kissed my woman goodbye. Then I headed out to the steel. Uh, that mag light lit the path right through the back of the field. I'd be there long enough to make enough money for me. Yeah. I cooked a batch off had a sip and sat next to that cop. Just breathing in and mighty forgetting I'm a problem. You better believe 
seasons high, cause the choppers flying fairly low. Brother, you won't find redemption down here in this holy water. Yeah, those that say it's a cosmetic change. Hadn't heard them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is definitely a difference there. Wow. The punch from the mid band and the bottom end mm -hmm. is absolutely definite. Mm -hmm. You can hear that big time. And it's so much crisper too. So much more clear. I don't know if that's due to the, if it's just more muddy due to the older cabinet. But it's the uh, the structure of it is going to be. It's, it's very possible. I mean, you know, they look at at the the cabinet resonance and you know vibrations of the cabinet mm -hmm. and all that using. Uh, just, I was going to tell you the name of the tool just went away. <laughs> <laughs> well, they added so much more, and it's not just the difference in the change of the uh, the compartmentalized cabinets. They added significant bracing throughout the structure as well. So right, it's, it's going to th that kind of change will help N number one what well, you've got some physics things happening there number one you've added a lot of weight to the cabinet right so the more weight you add to that pinpoint of those four points where it hits the ground mm -hmm. the more it couples to the ground the more it couples to the ground the better bottom end you're going to have my physics. back still hurts for moving them <laughs> extra, <laughs> extra weight there <laughs> there are extra weight there. Uh, uh so that part of it is is kind of physics people used to go through and you know fill the bottom half of their speaker with sand trying to make them heavier to get them to couple better so they'll mm -hmm. get better bottom end less movement the cleanliness of the top end it kind of opens up mm -hmm. do you know uh, if they changed the crossover point on the new gens i you know i don't know i i was i, I work from home now i haven't been in the lab <laughs> <laughs> to to see them work on these things yeah but uh uh i know the guys that do it and i know their due diligence that they go through mostly for for all their you know design work and all uh, so I, I'm sure they went through and checked that. I know every time they run the things, they run first and second harmonics and, and all that for distortion levels on all these things. So a accelerometer, <laughs> it just clicked. You put it to the side it. of the cabinet and it checks about how much vibration is in the cabinet itself. Okay. So that's one song down and th there is a huge difference there. I wonder if we go to something without quite as much bottom end, if we'll see quite the difference that we did in that one. Right, right. The next one we're gonna do is Trey Johnson, Bring My Baby Home. But before we do that, I wanna let you guys know we're using the same setup. We've got the NAD T778 receiver going out to the QSC ABX switcher with the old gen, first gen 8000Fs on channel B and the new gen on channel A. We'll be putting that on screen as well so you guys will see it switch over, but yeah, same setup. Same everything, but I didn't didn't look, I, I didn't notice which was which. I heard the difference. Mm -hmm. I can't and believe it. I've seen so many comments. Why are you even bothering? They're the, they're the exact same speaker. They just put some some a facelift on it or some makeup yeah, on it. No, if they think all it is is makeup, they're sorely mistaken. <laughs> I mean, I, I I didn't know which one was which. I hadn't paid attention to them as far as the feet with the carpet over there. It's kind of hard to see which feet is which anyway. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's almost the only recognition between them, looking at the front. Does look a little Real different on. when you take off, the, uh, take off the grill. Let's take off the grills and show you a little bit more of the difference. So the grills are slightly different and that has that overflow effect. The feet are fairly similar. The new gen does have that giant horn on it. It is a massive horn on that new generation. Um, as well as in the backside, you got the dual ports. Um, you've got the updated cabinet structure but it is a different beast. The, the larger horn will allow it to go a little deeper in crossover point. I don't know if they did that, but it, or at least that have it overlap better. I keep asking that question. Should we look up the crossover point? Might as well. Did you guys know that if you're curious about the spec sheet, Klipsch posts all of those directly on the website. You can go to the website, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you can look up your very own spec sheet. They make it super easy for you. Spec sheet, first gen, sensitivity 98 dB, so it's the same there on both. The crossover frequency is 1630, 
and oh, 1750 on the old one. So they did change over the crossover point. So it went down just a little bit. Mm-hmm. 1750 to 1630. So yeah, the, if you guys were wondering, the crossover frequency has changed. The crossover point has changed. Um, you ready to move on to the next one? Sure. Trey Johnson, bring my baby home. Bottom end is tight. I mean, I'll just keep saying it. It's the same thing on that cut as it was the last one for me. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that cut didn't dig as deep as the other one did, so you didn't notice that it went super farther, super more deeper. That it went deeper? Yeah. Words. <laughs> you didn't notice that it went as deep, but it was, it was definitely tighter. It wasn't... I never knew the first gens to be muddy, but... Compared to the new gens, they seem to be a little bit. I would, I would definitely it's, agree it's with that. It's kind of one of those it's, where, like, you wouldn't have known it if you, you hadn't. You're not going to set them side by side and play them mm -hmm. in your home, but so you're never going to know the difference. Just like we've done with the RF7s mm -hmm. and the, all the earlier versions. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I think I think you've hit it there. It's, it's a step in the right direction. It's a step in the right direction. They have toned something down or, or tightened something up in that system whether it's the cabinet or the crossover or what they've done with the drivers i don't know mm -hmm. but it's definitely a change in the right direction so let's go to the the jason helm solo we heard a little bit of jason helms a minute ago but let's go to jason helm solo uh this is a country tune called my kind of woman
Leave it there for me. Holy cow, Batman. I've listened to that song umpteen jillion times. I've listened to that man play that song on acoustic guitar in my living room. <laughs> I've heard him play it on a big stage out at, out at uh, the music center. I've heard this thing everywhere. And that has been, I think that has to be one of the more clean reproductions of that song that I've heard. The distortion on the overall album is meant to be there, but it's, cleaned up so much in the newer version of this speaker that it doesn't sound like the same amounts of the, all those things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, it really cleaned it up. I'm gonna go back and listen to my little scholars again and see what I hear there because <laughs> that sounded really good. That's why I told you, so I'm gonna listen to it. Yeah, for the new ones? Yeah. That was... That sounded good. I, I was think impressed. One of, the, one of the big things I noticed about that is when we have it cranked up to really high volumes, if you're not listening on on the older generations, it was kind of a little bit more piercing on that those higher frequencies. And then you switched out to the to the newer gen, it's, just, it's more laid back and it's more... I think it comes from that teeter-totter. More relaxed. Right? You've got a teeter-totter of how much high end, how much low end. But you kind of set your volume on your mid-range because that's the easiest to do. Mm -hmm. you know. So then you try to tilt these things up to get them to balance where you want them. And most of the time you don't want the the... You want the high frequency just a tad above the low frequency, just you know that slight tilt up on a clip sound because of the uh, the opening up of the top end, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, you can you that's a hard teeter totter to play with, and minute differences make all kinds of different changes, mm -hmm. and uh, I have been in, in front of the chamber chasing my tail half 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 you know. Uh, Three microfarads, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, looking for that specific number to get it to do exactly what you want. Uh, yeah, the difference in the way they approach that on this new speaker is very evident. Mm -hmm. They, I don't know what they did. Either they changed the, stiff, the steepness of that slope or, but that balance of how much bottom end versus top end really allowed that top end to open up. And I feel like what it's going to allow for you when you buy these and take them home is you're going to have a more relaxed listening experience for longer periods of time without any kind of ear fatigue or anything like that due to the, due to the new nature of the speakers. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I listen relatively loud. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we watch TV in the 80s, 85 dB range. You know, it's pretty damn loud mm -hmm. for just watching TV. Movies can, uh, you know, push 100 at times. Uh, we're old and we like it loud, but, uh, uh, yeah, I don't have, I, I just don't seem to have that fatigue that people talk about. Yeah. The times that I have it is when I'm in the 120s <laughs> for any length of time, you know, just like going to the concert and you're too close to the stage, yeah. you know, it's just, it's too much. So I think my ears started ringing just thinking about it. <laughs> But uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, the the I don't run into a lot of that fatigue with the with these products, and or with any real product. I guess I just like listening at live volume. That's just the way I like it. Yeah. Well, let's got we got we got one more cut. We we did some uh, some low frequencies to begin with. Then we switched out to some country music. Actually, no, we have two cuts. We have two cuts left. Um, 
Let's save the other low frequency track for the end. Okay. Let's go with some metal real quick. Let's so do some metal. Yep. Yeah. All right, so this is Dracon, the value of all. We're starting on old gen. a moment there when you know that moment where it goes doo, 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 and you hear all the low frequencies 
I thought I was gonna like the old gens better for a moment, and then I switched to the new gens. I was like, nope, never mind. You got, <laughs> Just kidding. It got fatter. Yeah, yeah. It was real, real kind of bloated at that point mm -hmm. on that particular song. As soon as you switched over to the other ones, that bloating went away. Yeah. And his vocals went. Right up They're still here. <laughs> And I like that it was... Uh, sound like we're dissing on the old version, and we really don't mean to be. No, but it's... But, the, I mean, Clips didn't come out with a new gen to say the old gen was better. They would tend to agree with us, I'd imagine. I don't... Dis <laughs> yeah, I just, Generational progression happens for a reason. It's because they find that next thing that makes it just a little bit better. And the old gens, if you have the new gens, or, or the old gens right now, they're still awesome. <laughs> they are still awesome. We've talked about this before on this channel, mm -hmm. how the engineers are always looking for that last 10%, mm -hmm. right? You know, a speaker is only about 1% efficient, actually, anyway. Mm -hmm. So out of 1%, we're trying to get as much of that 1% as we can, you know? Mm -hmm. So that last one-tenth of a percent, I guess is really what it would be, is what they constantly look for to tweak. Because things haven't changed that much in the way a woofer is made or the way a tweeter is made, you know, a compression driver is made. None of that's changed dramatically. There's been small patented issue, you know, changes over the years and, and you know, Roy and Chris and them have some of those patents. But, uh, you know, as far as a, a drastic, this is gonna change the way audio works, it hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. Where uh, they are constantly uh, approaching analog using digital, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, that, that old cliche about how many stair steps does it take to make an analog curve, you know, a bunch. <laughs> All right, so, so we have one more. Bottom end? Bottom end, let's, uh, let's do some Matt Summers. All right, this is Matt Summers, Mycelium.
may be, very well be the weirdest statement I've ever made, but it sounded better due to the cleaner distortion. <laughs> it reproduced <laughs> the intended distortion in a better manner. Yes, sir. Yeah. That was a weird feeling that I had the entire time listening to that song. I don't know if that makes sense or not, and that's not going to come across on this mic at all. The, the same thing happened with that set cut as all the others. The top end opened up, the bottom end tightened up. It was more punchy, less boomy. Yeah. In this room, that's the way it represents itself. We could show swap places with the speakers. I don't think it would make a difference. You might be able to pull the speaker away from the wall and change the boomiest a little bit on the other one, make them a little more close, mm -hmm. but I, I don't think so. Honestly, it's all relative though. I mean, they're all equidistant from the wall. They're all equidistant from the back wall. They're all equidistant from us. So if we change one, we change the other, we're gonna get the same results. It's kind of where I'm at with it. So final synopsis, what are your final thoughts? Uh, if I had the, the uh, version one, I don't know that I'd spend the money to buy a version two. If I had a 6,000, versus and went, wanted to go to the 8,000 and go to the 8,002, I would absolutely spend the money to go to the 8,002. You know, these, these brand new ones that come out, they've got some, some fit and finish changes that are more than the lipstick on a pig here. Yes. You know, they, they really made a difference on the way these cabinets respond uh, by tightening up the cabinet, uh, creating a better punch out of that cabinet creating a better bottom end out of that cabinet. Not that it goes that much lower, it's just it seems to have a little more authority and cleanliness down there. It's just there. tighter. That's, that's it, just the whole speaker it, yeah. seems to be tighter. Wow. So uh, just to reiterate the differences from last gen is they have added all new cabinet bracing. They have divided the cabinet much like the RF7s are. So it's becoming more of the baby brother to the RF7s. They've stretched the horn so it takes up the entirety of the face of the cabinet, which not only looks good, it improves the over, overall sound and dispersion changes as well. The uh, cabinet changes, you can't really see looking at it, but they're definitely there and they definitely make a huge difference because drivers aren't that different. It's the cabinet that's different, it is the crossover that's different, and it is the structure of the entire unit. It is not just a beautification of the existing generation it is a, it is an all brand new unit if we're looking for a winner between the two on the verses oh the new one is the winner absolutely yes and it's not because it's the new one it's because it's better it's better and it, it, <laughs> if it wasn't better i'd tell you and they wouldn't like it a lot but <laughs> but i'd tell you anyway yeah. <laughs> So I think that's going to be about all we have for you today, guys. Uh, we are getting close to the end of the season. I think what we're going to do next is we got them set up. Might as well dive into the 504C at Gen 1 versus Gen 2. I didn't even know that's what it was. Yep. First Gen versus second Gen. Hmm. We'll get him back in here next week and do a center channel compare. All right. Sounds like a plan. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jason. I'm Trey. We'll see you again next week for another episode of PHT TV. You didn't hear that, did you? What? I said, we're going to get to play with Matt Summers' bottom end. <laughs> All right, so this is Matt Summers' mycelium. <laughs> is that what he calls his bottom <laughs> end? <laughs> I need to start it over now. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry.